While fans loved Enzo Amore, backstage was different. It was said that most WWE wrestlers didn't like the realest guy in the room, and Enzo actually got kicked out of the locker room and even a tour bus. One night on Raw, The Miz came face to face with Amore and dug into him. I tend not to think before I speak. And that's the trouble with you, isn't it? You don't think. When you came from NXT to WWE Monday Night Raw, you and Cass were the next big thing. You would sell out merchandise, pay-per-views with John Cena. Everyone loved Enzo and Cass, but look at you now. Time progresses, and you don't know when to shut your mouth. You don't listen. You think you know everything better than everybody else. That's why you're kicked out of WWE tour buses, and that is why you are kicked out of the WWE locker room. You think you chose to bring your personality to the cruiserweight division? There was nowhere else for you to go because no one on the WWE Monday Night roster can stand you. In 2007, there were rumors going around that Carlito was lazy and spoiled. How true or false that was is unknown, but this perception about Carlito led to a passionate speech by Ric Flair. Hey, where are you going? We're going to me until we're going out. Do you realize there's a triple threat main event match going on tonight, live on Raw, to see who goes to WrestleMania? You're telling me it's cool you're leaving? You're not gonna stay and watch the show? At least it's not the main event. If you ever stop to think that there's a reason why guys like you, and I'm talking about guys like you, are not in the main event, that's right, why you're not in the main event? Because maybe you're a lazy, underachieving son of a bitch. Lucky to be walking the halls of this building. Lucky to be on the Raw roster. Lucky to be here at all. You're really pissing me off right now. How's your problem? My problem, I'll tell you what my problem is. Guys like you, that they have no passion, no guts. You, don't, you want all the money, you want all the glory, you want to fly first class, you want to walk around with someone like her, you don't deserve it. You haven't worked for it. You haven't bled, sweat, and paid the price to be here. That's what drives me crazy. I'm walking this all trying to figure out why guys like you are taking my spot. I've been here forever. And I'm gonna work my ass off to stay here. McMahon told me today, if I wanna stay, I gotta prove it to him. You wanna stay, you gotta prove it to yourself. Arguably, the biggest embarrassment of Jeff Hardy's career was at Impact Wrestling's 2011 Victory Road pay-per-view. The charismatic Enigma came out intoxicated for the main event match, if you can even call it a match. After a few months off, Hardy did return, and this is what was said to him. AJ, I just... Uh, uh, now's not the time or the place. You know what bothers me the most? That I've been here for nine years, literally killing myself for this company. Nine years, more matches than anybody else, that's for sure. Held all the titles, and one night, Jeff Hardy gets in the ring on a pay-per-view and almost destroys the whole thing. Not that I just helped build, but everybody who's been here. You almost killed the whole company, because you're selfish. That's what that is. You're selfish. I gotta feed my family. You're gonna take money off my family? You're gonna take money away from my family? Is that what you're gonna do? Because that's what you did. You're responsible for that. So when people talk negative about Impact Wrestling, it's because of you. I'm not the guy out there. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing anything. I'm just killing myself for the company, just trying to make it up. Something that we can all appreciate and love and that the fans can be entertained by. In 2016, Dolph Ziggler was feuding with the Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. Despite Dolph's best efforts, the most must-see WWE superstar always managed to come out on top. This led to Ziggler giving one of the most emotional speeches ever heard in WWE. You're right, man. This, this is all I have. This couple minutes a night, 300 nights a year, this is my everything. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone when they know that I live for this. This, this is what I love. But you know what? Sometimes things you love don't always love you back. And you can give, 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 and sometimes you get nothing in return, you get nothing! And you have friends, and family, and fans coming up to you telling you, why do you still do it? Why are you still here? Why do you subject yourself to this every night? It's because I can't stop. It's a sickness, I can't stop! And maybe my career didn't always turn out the way I thought it would, you know? I thought it would have been better. I thought I earned something. I thought I would be a bigger star, but you know what? I just can't stop myself. Triple H is a legend today, but back in the 90s, things weren't the same. The game was still trying to become a top star, and an interview with Jim Ross showed the world exactly why he deserved to be. It's about four years ago, Madison Square Garden, I walked to the ring to say goodbye to my friends, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels. Who got punished for that, JR? Me. I did. You know why? Because you didn't have the Nobody in the office had that 
to do it to anybody else. They did it to me. Why? Because I was the easy one. I was the one that would take it. Good old Triple H, he'll rise to the occasion later on. Don't worry about it. He'll come through. We can take care of that now, punish him, get rid of that. He'll come back later. Well, you know what? That makes me sick in my stomach. Every time I look at you guys, it makes me sick to think what you did to me, holding me back. You guys talk about being students of the game. I am the game, JR. There is nobody that eats, sleeps, or breathes this business more than me. In the lead-up to their match at No Way Out, Brock Lesnar and Eddie Guerrero confronted each other in the ring. This gave us arguably the greatest speech of Eddie's WWE career. Eddie Guerrero, I really hope you are addicted. Addicted to losing because this Sunday at No Way Out, you're gonna get your fix. Truth is, Brock, I am an addict. See, Brock, about three years ago, Holmes, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Vato, your home state, a try, Vato, in the shower, in the locker room. Oh, man, I was high, bro. I was high, high, high. And I don't remember much about that night, I said, but what I do remember, uh, they carried me out of that arena and they carried me straight into rehab. And see, they didn't do that. I did that to myself, Vato. But that was just the beginning of it, I said. Because see, through all that time, bro, through all those three years, not only did I wind up losing my jaw, I lost my wife, I lost my kids, and I lost myself. I lost my spirit. I disgraced my race. I disgraced my family. And I disgraced myself. But you know what, Brock? I came to a point in my life, Mr. Vato. I came to a point where it was do or die, Holmes. I had to make a decision. Do or die. And you know what, Mr. I did. Because I'm here right now. Day by day, by the grace of God, I have earned my way back into this ring, man. Day by day, by the grace of God, I have earned the respect of my kids again. Day by day, I have earned my life back. And see, Holmes, when I stand across you and I see that across your waist, you know what that symbolizes for me, I say? That symbolizes for me, I'm sorry. That's my way of telling my family I'm sorry. That's my way of telling my kids I'm gonna provide a better way of life for them. I'm gonna get the bikes that they wanted. I'm gonna give them a better education. That's my new addiction, home. See, when I step into this ring, yeah, bro, I am addicted. I'm addicted to the high that I get from them. I'm addicted to the high that I get when I go home and I tell my family, hey, I'm doing it. I'm addicted to the satisfaction that I get to tell everybody like you that didn't believe in me, you can stick it up your I'm addicted to the do or die feeling, Holmes, that I'm gonna have this Sunday night at No Way Out because you know as well as I do, Holmes, oh, what a high it is when we're in here, brother. See, but the difference between me and you, bro, is that I'm an addict and I'll do anything and run over anybody that it's gonna take to get that around my waist and get my high at No Way Out and become the W. WWE Champion Olalevato! This is why Eddie Guerrero is a legend. Unfortunately, for all the inspirational moments, there's a lot of sad ones. To see the serious WWE moments, watch the video on screen.